Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? And welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I am the Gallery Program Facilitator and Preparator at Art Starts and Schools. This month we're going to be exploring landscapes. And today I thought we could look at the word natural. Generally, when people talk about landscapes, they talk about outside. They talk about yards or parks or rolling hills and mountains. Um, so that's generally what people mean when they're talking about landscapes. There's also something called a landscape orientation. So if um, I have a rectangular or at least um, a square that one side is longer than the other, when I am having it horizontal like this with the longer side at the top and the bottom, this is considered to be a landscape orientation. So if you were taking a picture, if you were holding up your phone, um, if you're going to be painting something, this is called a landscape orientation. There's more space across the page. Why would that be useful if we think about a landscape like a yard or a park or a mountain? If you think about looking at a park, even though there are really, really tall trees, or even when you look at a mountain, the mountain may be really, really tall. In general, landscapes are a wide space. And so wide being this way rather than tall being this way, having more space like this allows you to capture more of the landscape, right? So even if there was a really big mountain, it would be allowed to be really big and you'd be able to see all the other mountains. And if you think about a park, you know, a big wide open grass space. And even if there's a big tree there, there's probably more land and more grass that needs more room on the page this way than this way. When we turn our page in this direction, this is 
um, considered portrait. Um, and if you think about a portrait being something that is about a person, um, why would a portrait orientation make more sense for taking a picture of a person? Because in general, we are usually taller than we are wider. That's not to say that some people aren't wider than they are tall. But in general, if we were going to look at averages or um, stereotypes or groups of humans, um, in general, we are taller than we are wider. And so a portrait makes more sense if we're going to be capturing people and then a landscape orientation when we are going to be capturing natural landscapes. So already we've just explored the word uh, landscape just as it relates to how we turn the page. We haven't even put anything on the page. What can we put on the page this week while we're exploring the word natural? If you're going to follow along with me and make something, uh, do you have a viewfinder? If you've made with me in the past or participated in any of our framing sessions, you may have made yourself a viewfinder. You can check out any of our previous Explorers episodes on YouTube or Facebook or on our website at artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. Um, and you can, you can follow that along. But what a viewfinder is, is it's basically just a frame. So if you had a piece of paper and you want to cut a shape out of the middle of it, then that's great. You got yourself a viewfinder. If you've got a picture frame that you have permission to disassemble or take apart and then put the glass or the plastic safely aside and then use the mat, the, fr the, the mat, which is the, this uh, thicker material that sits between the glass and the picture, you can use that um, as your viewfinder and then put it back when you're all finished. Again, if you have permission to do that. Um, but if you don't have a piece of paper and you don't want to make a viewfinder, and you have two hands, not everybody has two hands, but if you have two hands, you can quickly make a viewfinder by uh, extending your thumbs out and leaving your uh, fingers flat sticking forward. And then what you do is you twist one hand over. So both thumbs are now facing in the same direction. And then what you do is you stack them on top of each other. So Again, went like this. So one of my palms flipped over. And so now my thumb of one hand is touching my fingers of the other. And uh, my other thumb is touching my fingers of the other hand. So you can see in the middle, what do my hands make? It's kind of awkward to hold it in this direction. But if you were to hold it up in front of you, what do you notice? That's right, you've got a viewfinder wherever you go. So you might have a camera that you could look through that will make give yourself a rectangle. But if you didn't have a camera and you don't have a viewfinder and you have two hands, you can always bring your hands together like this and create a quick frame that you can be looking through. Do you have some paper? Any kind of paper is great from the recycling bin, uh, a project that you've used before that's already got marks on it. That's just great. Nothing we're making is for keeps. We're just playing and trying things out. And then do you have any mark making tools? And a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. That's a pencil, a pencil crayon, crayons, paint, lipstick, anything you have permission to use that can mark up a page is just great. A landscape is the visible features of an area of land, its landforms, and how they integrate with natural or man-made features, often considered in terms of the aesthetic appeal. So basically, they're usually described um, in aesthetics or how they look or how pretty or not pretty they are. Let's explore this word natural. I'm going to use my 
tweezers here to hold that down. There we go. So let's look at that word natural. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna rewrite it again. Put my viewfinders to the side. I'm gonna write it again bigger on this piece of paper. And I'm gonna do it in Sharpie. So it's nice and big and nice and dark. All right, natural. Have you ever heard this word before when people are talking about landscapes or outside places like parks or landscapes? What does it mean? What does natural mean? Well, there's a word kind of half hidden in here, but doesn't have its E. And one of those is nature, right? So we're out in nature, if you've ever heard that. The landscape is full of trees. We are in a natural, we're, we're out in nature. We're taking a nature walk. Uh, we're walking through nature, right? So that's very, very similar. Uh, natural can sometimes mean uh, grown or growing. So it it grows. It usually means outside. Not always, though. Right? You could have a... Mm, you could have a lot of nature inside by bringing plants inside. Uh, what else is natural when, when it's inside? Oh, you could have natural sunlight, right? So the sun comes into a room and brightens up a room. Um, and that's usually considered natural because it's uh, from nature, it's from the sun. But that's still outside that came inside. So generally outside is connected with natural. Anything else we can think of? You might be thinking about a whole bunch of things that I'm not thinking about, and that's great. Um, and you can come back to this. You could ask other people what they think the word natural means. Um, you could ask them what they think natural and landscapes have to do with each other. Um, you know what? I'm going to put one more here because I often hear the word healthy associated with natural. These don't necessarily have to be true or right, but they're words that I have associated with the word natural because I've heard things. I've made this connection. I know that things that can grow are usually considered natural. I know that a lot of healthy foods or healthy activities are considered to be natural or things, activities that are natural or food that is natural is considered to be healthy. Uh, that going outside, you're going out into nature. The things generally have to be from the outside to be natural. And that the idea of outside being called nature. So here are some words um, that are usually associated with landscapes because landscapes are usually growing. So if we think about parks or backyards again, um, going outside into nature, there might be grass, there might be a creek or a waterway, there might be a tree, things grow in the, tr in the creek, bugs and weeds and grass grows and trees grow and allow other things to grow inside them and off of them. So um, the reason that I'm bringing up the word natural, and the reason we're going to explore natural, is um, I wanted to ask the question, are all landscapes natural? So landscapes have things in common with all of these things that we put on the outside of natural. So does landscape equal natural? Let's see. So 
I'm going to take a second and I encourage you to do this as well. And maybe you can do this after uh, Explorers as well, because we've only got a little bit of time. We only spend about 30 minutes together doing Explorers. But if what you want to do later today or later this weekend or later this week is take your viewfinder and go and find a landscape or go outside with your uh, viewfinder and look around at what you see. If you are living somewhere that has a backyard or a park or a public area that um, is shared by other people um, or residents in the building that you're living in, go on out to the park there or to um, the yard um, and look around. Is the park or is your backyard natural? Did it grow? Was it placed there? Is it more long than it is tall? Who uses it? Do you think it's a healthy space? If you don't have access to a backyard or a, a shared play area, you could take a walk to a park. You could take a, a hike or a forest walk. You could even just walk in your neighborhood um, wherever you are staying or go to a schoolyard and look around. What do you see through your viewfinder? When you are looking at something that you would call nature, is it a landscape? And if you are looking up at the trees or looking at the mountains or looking at the plains or whatever you can see through your viewfinder, is that a landscape? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures of landscapes. So this picture, I have a picture of mountains. Can you draw the natural things you see? There's light on the mountains that is causing um, shadow. And uh, this is pretty far out, but we can, we can tell that there are trees that lead up the mountain and down to the base of the mountain. We're not really sure what else is there, but those are definitely some very green mountains. So before I go on, is this landscape, this mountainous landscape, natural? There are no wrong or right answers in Explorers. We're just, we're just asking questions. So do you think this is natural? Okay, let's look at the next picture. This is a picture of a park. Can you draw the natural things you see? There are lots of trees in this park. There's uh, some water that is running through this park. There are, uh, there's grass, places to sit. There are animals that use this park. Uh, it's a very pretty park, lots of grass. Okay, let's look at this one. Is this a landscape? or in this park landscape, let's call it a landscape, yeah, it is a landscape, um, is it natural? Is this, would you consider this a natural landscape? Okay, next picture. This is a picture of a hiking trail. Can you draw the natural things you see? It's a public hiking trail 
that is um, managed or taken care of um, by a local school. Um, but anybody can walk there. It's open from um, basically whenever the sun is up, people are allowed to walk this trail. Sometimes um, the trail is closed because of rain or snow and they want to keep the trail safe. So imagine you were taking a hike or doing a nature walk on uh, this forest path. Is this a landscape? Is this natural? Okay, this is the last landscape we're going to look at. In this picture, we have a landscape of garbage. Can you draw the natural things you see? We have mountains of garbage packaged up recycling that uh, wasn't recycled. Um, we've got a uh, basically a junkyard of piles of waste, but we've got paths that walk through it. Um, lots and lots of different colors uh, and we can see the sky. So what about this one? Is this landscape natural? Okay, so you've had a chance to look at all of those pictures and I drew a little thumbnail or a little version of each of these pictures. So the, in this man-made landscape, is this natural? Is it all um, waste that was fabricated or did nature make any of this waste? How is the man-made garbage affecting nature or the land or the water around it. So that word natural, you know, probably wouldn't be used for this one because we can see what, what has been dropped off here. We can see that we have added something artificially to this area that wouldn't normally be here, the garbage that we made. But what would happen if, let's pretend for a second, all humans took a trip. Uh, we all got in spaceships and we went to another planet. Uh, and we decided to hang out on that planet for 200 years or a thousand years. And then we came back to the planet and nobody had touched this in all this time. And so maybe things had grown up through this. Maybe bad things had grown up through this. Maybe things um, had been destroyed because of the garbage and how it affected the land. Or maybe this is all covered in moss now or all covered in grass because uh, it grew over time. What about now? Is a garbage dump that has been taken over by nature um, natural? You get to answer that question. What about the forest path? So, we know that um, some of this is natural because of the growing, right? Because trees grow, because animals grow there um, or live there, because plants grow there. Uh, we might learn about the uh, plants and um, things that we can harvest or just observe like mushrooms or fruit or nuts um, along our path. But is this natural? Did this happen this way? Did the trees grow in this way and did a path just happen to um, run through the forest in that way? It is a landscape, whether or not it's, it's natural because of, uh, because of all these, these features, but it's very likely that this path was made by a human 
and is probably maintained or taken care of by humans so that it can be safe for, for humans to pass. Remember I was saying before that um, in the picture I showed you that sometimes the path got closed down? Um, then you can see that this, um, this landscape may have natural things in it, but it isn't necessarily all natural humans were still involved in, um, in this, in the making and the main, um, the maintenance, the care for this, for this space. What about the park? The beautiful park with the trees. Um, and there's, you know, there's a path and there's some trees, but there's uh, lots of places for people to sit. Um, the birds can come and go. It's very peaceful. Um, what about this scene? Is this a natural landscape? It's nature. It's outside. Things are growing. From the look of the color of the trees or the color of the water, we might use the word healthy to describe it. But if we were going to go look at the history of the park and who had traditionally lived there before the park was a park, or the ancestral people who had lived there or a village um, that was there before this park was there. Um, this bridge is man-made. The way that the water flows through this park and so that the park um, can be uh, traversed or traveled or walked across, um, that was all designed by a um, probably a park planner or an architect or a civil engineer. So there was somebody who made a plan. They might not have said that tree has to be exactly there two meters from the water, but they probably chose the kind of tree and they probably chose it in relation to the water. What about when we take nature from one place and bring it to another? So what if the tree that I showed you in that picture um, looks like it belongs there, but it actually doesn't grow naturally or originally um, in this land. It came from another country or another climate um, and is now uh, growing um, in, in BC regularly. It grows. It's outside. Is it natural that it's there? Okay, last picture. What about the mountains? Are the mountains natural? They're outside. They're not really growing, but things are growing on them, right? We talked about the trees before. And, you know, the, the snow that, that falls, um, that waters the ground, and there are seeds and nuts and birds and um, all kinds of animals that live there. It's considered healthy to take a walk um, and to exercise on mountains, getting to take ski trips, take uh, hiking trips, camping trips, all of those things that we associate with natural. Did humans make mountains? We put things on mountains. We take things out of mountains, like, um, mining, um, when we take minerals out of the, uh, out of the mountains, if we forage or we go into the trees, um, and we take seeds, um, or plants or mushrooms from the area. So we, we add and we take away, but we didn't really make the mountains. And even though we're affecting the mountains, we're pretty small in comparison to what the mountains are. So of these four pictures, which one would you call natural? Are they all natural? Are none of them natural? We asked a lot of questions and that's an important part of, exp of exploring and art making. If you're thinking about um, what you wanna do as maybe a job or a career, and you wanna work outside, um, working with landscapes or working in natural environments and thinking about how we affect the land and the waterways is a, 
an important thing to be doing in our art making um, and in our daily lives. This is just one way to think about landscapes. And if you want to do some more hands-on making, I encourage you to go out and take your uh, viewfinder or your hands or your camera and take a whole bunch of pictures of a bunch of natural, or, uh, natural places or things that you would call natural. Some big questions um, this week, but I know you can do it. If, uh, if all of these questions are a bit too much and you just want to draw your favorite landscape, that's a great way of exploring while you're thinking um, as well. This week, I learned to also question the word healthy. I was thinking about this when I was making my word map, um, that while I do see the word natural and healthy put together pretty often, that I don't think they always have to go together. Just because something is natural, thinking like, mushrooms or certain plants. Just because they're natural doesn't mean I should eat them. They'll certainly hurt me and sometimes really seriously, but they are natural. They grew. Um, they may not have grown in that place originally without a human bringing them from somewhere. So if it's like an invasive plant from another place that is kind of poisonous, but looks really pretty, that's not necessarily healthy, both for the land or for me. And so I think going forward, when I think about that word natural, I want to be a little bit more careful um, and intentional or be really careful to use that word healthy when I've done some research and some thinking about whether or not um, that natural thing is good for me, the planet, or other people around me. Okay. So I'm going to clean up my space because one of the ways that we practice respect um, at Explorers is cleaning up everything that we've done. I'm going to put my paper back in the recycling bin because nothing is for keeps. Um, and if you want to keep drawing your landscapes, I encourage you to do that. But if you want to go outside and take a nature, nature walk with your viewfinder, I hope you have a really great day. All right, I'll see you again next week as we continue to explore landscapes. See you soon.